we touched on Green Street because that's what you're most well known for. Yeah. Um, even though my my favourite piece of work you've done is It's a Casual Life. Um, uh, mine too. Yeah. I, I still think it's the, I still think it's the best uh, the best fight scene that we, yeah. uh, anyone's done on screen. Uh, right. And considering we did it in a day, you know, in a day, fight scene was done in a day, yeah. Um, right. And uh, and the the monologue, which was the the, the Richard Driscoll stuff, was done in, on a, a couple of uh, whether it was a day after or a couple of days after. But um, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, my first experience of screen stuff. Right. Uh, and it was uh, it was brilliant. It was, uh, you know, it it looks, it still looks really good. It still looks great. I, I, yeah. Well, I mean, without a doubt, it's it's your it's 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 my favourite of what you've done. Even today, it, it doesn't look dated. Um, oh, but that was. I mean, we had we had good lads on it. We made sure we got you know good lads involved in it. Richard was great because we knew he was a proper football bloke. Which is yeah. one of the reasons why, why when we were, were looking for someone to do it, he was actually the first name on my list because I'd seen him being interviewed somewhere because he, he was he's a massive Millwall fan, right. and um, and I and I'd seen him in EastEnders and uh, and I thought he he'd be perfect, and when he yeah. came in, we saw we saw we we um, auditioned people all day, and. Um, and they were all, you know, they were all great. Most of them ended up in the fight scene anyway. Most of the ones we saw, but he was. Right. We saw a, a couple of very well-known actors who, who were shit. But as soon as he walked in, it was. He, I knew he was the right one. And and John, of course, who directed it and put it all together, went on to, you know, far. He he went on to do Cass, uh, the Laurel and Hardy oh, movie, okay. and all those. So he, you know, he was. You know, it was the first big thing for him, I think. So uh, it was just good people. We had great people all the way through. And, uh, yeah, and it well, good really people good. That always helps. And like yeah, you definitely. said, I mean, he, he's a massive Millwall fan, so he knew. He yeah, knew what he, 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 did, he didn't have to act. He didn't, you know, we gave him the words he, and he, he didn't have to act. It was just him. You know, he's no, like, like you said, you, uh, had, you had well known or better known actors, but that doesn't mean they were better for the part. Can't, I've always said, you know, you can't, when it comes to stuff like, uh, and it, it, it can't, you can see it in Green Street, you know, uh, you can't fake it. No. You, know, you, you either know football or you don't know football. You can't, you know, you can't, um, if someone said to you, oh, I can, I can learn all about it. Well, you can't learn all about it. You either know it or you don't know it. You're never going to pick it up. Yeah, it's you not know. something you research, is it? No, no, it's 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 not. You know, what's the old saying? It's not what you wear; it's how you wear it, and it's yeah, true. That's absolutely true. And um, uh, casual casual life nailed it. I think Green Street was bleeding miles off. It was a lot of t was was taken out of your hands. Oh, I ended up walking away from it. I mean, I've I've never made any secret of that. Um, there was there was lots went on in the background, you know, to do with egos, to do with the director, um, and and in the end, you know, you got where it can. There's a scene in Green Street where they, they throw a, a petrol bomb through a pub window, and that scene where, when that scene had been there been a lot of arguments about that scene between me and the director because I said it didn't work, right. didn't work as it is, and um, we. Uh, she dug her heels in and she would not change it. The, that that became the point of principle after all the arguments we'd had and all disagreements and all other shit that was going on in the background. And um, and in the end, I said, well, if you're going to film it, just film it. I don't really, you know, I don't want much to do with it. And then on the day, I'd been on set on the that day and um, the two of the actors came up to me and said, can you work with us on this scene? Because we don't think it works. Because all the dialogue was written for one person, where you've got three people, I think it was three or four people sitting around the table. Yeah. So um, so I went and worked with them, spent half hour, we rewrote it slightly, and I went home. And then, the, you know, when it comes to do the scene in the evening, 
she said, you know, action. They started doing the discussion that we had had. Um, and she went apeshit. And, uh, and there was a massive row. I got banned off set, all sorts of crap. And, and to be fair, you know, I shouldn't have done that. But that was my first feature film. You know, it's not my job to go in and mess around with dialogue and stuff like that. No. So, um, but I, you know, I did. It was a mistake. And, uh, but hey, ho. You've got, you know, it, 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 if you learn from it, that's, that's, that's all you can do. Yeah, it was, just one, it was just one of them things. But it just didn't work. And, it, you know, it's my, you know, we made Green Street, what, 15 years ago now? Yeah, and uh, we're yeah, still, you know, we're still talking about it. You know, we're still talking about yeah. it. Now. So, and I'm the one who gets all the flack for how shit, shit parts of it were. And um, yeah. but that's, you know, that's fine. It goes to the territory. You know, I'm yeah. not, I'm not, not going to take it off my CV, am I? So you, so, so you was nothing to do with the casting then. Of, um, I, I, I slagged off that that it was Elijah Wood. Yeah, I mean, for some of them, um, for some of the lads. I was involved, but most of them I had nothing to do with. We met Leo quite early on, so we knew he'd be in. Um, Charlie Hunnam, she wanted. Um, Elijah Wood came about. I was I was walking up Tottenham Court Road, and I got a phone call from America to say, "What do you think about Elijah Wood?" And I thought they were joking, <laughs> um, and I and I stupidly said, "Oh yeah, it'd be fucking brilliant," you know, blah blah blah. So the phone went. Down. Next thing I do, I, I've got a phone call. We've cast Elijah Wood, and um, and then of course you get money thrown at you. Like money's been thrown at the movie because Elijah Wood, Lord of the Rings, massive. Yeah, big name. Now, if but if you think of it, if, you know, he could have worked. It could have worked with him if you'd have worked with his character. But his character didn't actually develop at all. If you if you look at the movie, and no one ever talks about this. At the end of the movie, he's still wearing the same clothes he turned up in at the beginning. There was no kind of evolution of that side of, of him. Yeah. And, um, and that was a massive failure, you know, a massive failure. Still and, singing uh, three comes in the air. Yeah, it was just, it was just, it was stuff like that that really let it down. And the, the thing about things like this, about movies like these, is guys like you, no, no disrespect, but that's important to you. The, the, yeah. You know, all those little things, the clothes, the music, the way you walk, the swagger, the dialogue, all that stuff's important to you. Well, you're uh, the, we look at that straight away. Yeah, you're yeah. the viewer. And so, it, and it's the same with books, you know, it's all, you, the viewer and the reader are the most important person in the whole creative process. So as long as you keep that in mind, um, you can't go far wrong. And we got it right in casual life. We got it closer in Top Dog. Top Dog was not bad. But they, yeah. they missed it on they missed it with um Green Street. And it it because of the fact that there was she wouldn't relinquish control of a lot of it, you know, the bird who directed it. Yeah. And there were other people who got involved in it who didn't um let it down really. I, I I think people there were people milling around involved in that movie. You shouldn't have been involved in it, I don't think. Um who were just trying to make a point and trying to influence it for their own ends. And well, um, I think I think was there a tweet from you the other week about that Leo Gregory's character should you know something should have happened with him. Yeah, I mean it, the yeah. best thing to come out of Green Street was the bother character. Yeah. Without that, he's. I mean, Leo's a great actor anyway, which is why we used him in Top Dog. Mm -hmm. And um, and we've been talking about the 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 potential for doing a proper sequel to Green Street, not a Green Street Two or none of that shit that they they tried yeah. to churn it. And um, so I got in. I wrote a script. Um, me and Leo talked about it a lot. We we started to get in touch with the other cast members. Um, Jeff Bell, you know, who, who played. Um, Tommy Atcher. Oh, yeah, all, yeah. All those people, and they all wanted to do it. And um, so we went to uh, Lionsgate, who were really keen, who produced, you know, the, the distributors. Everyone yeah. was keen on it, and the Americans wouldn't let us do it. They just said no. And uh, and it was a real, real shame. No, they don't have to give you a reason. They just said, no, we don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. but I said to them, we don't even want you i don't particularly want you involved in, in effect 
all it is is you're you're getting free money. You're not going to do anything, you know. And uh, but they just said no, and it's uh, it was a real shame because it was a it was a great script, you know. Everyone wanted to do it. There's, there's certainly an audience for it. I think definitely. And uh, and it's it's never going to happen. It's and it's a real shame, you know. Well, not they, least because you've got a load of actors. It's it's jobs for people, you know, as much as anything. Exactly. Exactly. So, well, I, mean, we, I mean, I was looking last night and I think the last the last football film which wasn't really a football film was The Governors back in 2014 there hasn't been anything since and that was more of a revenge plot uh, hoodies, yeah, yeah hoodies. it's uh, that's one of the things a lot of people who go, who go into these kind of movies tend to forget you know you need a story it's not as simple as group of blokes go here have a fight and come home it's nothing like that Fight scene. <laughs> yeah, you, you know you can do that in any town on any Saturday night. You you do that, but you yeah. need a story to drive everything along. And um, Green Street was uh, it was an obvious story because you needed you know how else are you going to parachute an American in? There's only one way you can do it. It's got to be a yeah. journalist. Very and, true. Uh, but the the original idea was to do a you know it was supposed to be. Uh, the British Fight Club. That's what we wanted to do from day one. That's that had always been a discussion, and it changed yeah. once the producers um, came on board. The, the fact they were all women didn't help at all because they didn't didn't get it. And it wasn't just about that. Didn't get football. Half of them didn't even get blood. Yeah, I mean, I, when I, I uh, you know, when you just have women involved, and it's not to be chauvinistic or anything, but it's a very, it's a very, you know, it's it's what males do. Yeah, I mean that's one of us, but that's one of the, the. It's quite a private football, you know. I've been looking back over some of the, the old photos and videos from the eighties lately, seventies and eighties, and it's a very primal, you know. It was a very primal experience being, you know, oh, really? going to football in them days. But that was one of the big attractions, and that's something that's missing. You know, it's like when we had, used to have all these discussions in the media about hooliganism and casuals and all that sort of crap. One of the things, and Cass, it was Cass made the point in one in one interview. But one of the things that everyone missed us, the reason we did it is because it was fucking good fun. You know, <laughs> we had a, it was absolute blast. You know, yeah. it didn't, it wasn't necessarily about going somewhere and having a row. It was no. just, a, every day was an adventure. And sometimes you had a, a row, sometimes you came out on top. Sometimes you got battered. Sometimes you had a laugh. Sometimes you bumped into a group of these lads in a pub, yeah. and, uh, and had a right laugh of them. And uh, and that's how it was. And it was the, the never knowing, never knowing what was around the corner, never knowing what was in the next pub, never knowing what was at the motorway services. It was that adventure and the secrecy surrounding all that. You know, this like like kind of secret little world we were all in. That yeah. was the action. That's why we did it. You know, it was it was nothing. Political. I mean, I think, it's to do with you know, it wasn't a social thing, you know. It, you know, it's all, or it's, you know, a reflection of society. We wanted to win our game back. We were rebelling against Thatcher's bread. What are the bollocks? Just a lot of blokes having a laugh every Saturday watching football. That's exactly. what it was all about, you know. And yeah. they, they missed it. And if if we do see another football film, which I doubt, I doubt we will. Okay. Uh, to be honest, Unless it's a re unless it's a retro one, right? Yeah, uh, which which would bring its own difficulties. I mean, where you know you've got to have the clothes, you've got to have all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, I don't know how you're going to recapture that, that how that that period in time because it was a phenomenal period in time. It'd be difficult. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I do my website and my Facebook page because I just. I don't want that part of history and that British subculture being forgotten for one. No, certainly not. And I don't want, and I want to get the message out that it, it's it wasn't just about fighting. That wasn't the main yeah, part. Of it. You know, if it happened, it happened. You yeah. know, but like you said, there was friendship there. You know, there was camaraderie. I mean, the fashion to come out of it is the big business now. You know. Yeah, I mean, it, there was there were so many different elements. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we got into it in the first writing, you know, got into writing about it in the first place. It was, you know, we started 
the idea started to, to build for everywhere we go, which was the first book in the build up to Euro 96. And the, the, I mean, TV from probably the last third of 80, uh, 95, TV was going rabid about, you know, oh, it's going to be World War Three in London and all this sort of shit. And they were just spouting complete crap. And it was all kind of knocking uh, football. It was all very negative towards football. We were all racist. We were all right wing. We were all unemployed. We were all unintelligent. Yeah. All this shit. And, and that's why we wanted to write a book and, and why we got doing, you know, were so, um, we were on the news or, you know, we were quite public. We were quite happy to go public and talk about it because we wanted to write something that gave actually this is what it was actually like this is what it was actually about it's, yeah. it wasn't about all these things you're accusing us of and being demonizing us saying it is you know, yeah you're trying to demonize football fans as, as being this that or the other and it's still going on you know no, we've, of course. we've got it now we've got it now with the taking the knee stuff that if you don't That's think you're right. taking your knee oh you you must be racist you must be right wing you must be all these sorts of shit and, you know it just drives me up the, the wall to be honest yeah and um, but we're an easy target because there's no one to defend us. And one of the reasons we, well, one of the reasons we did with everywhere we go, and it's you know, is is to kind of redress that balance, and and yeah. explain this is what it's about. This is why we did it. This is the good stuff to come about it. Yeah, there was some bad stuff as well. Of course. You know, but um, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. You know. No. And can you, you know, it's, it, football was football was different then. Going to football was different then. And so, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's no, there's no comparison to what goes on at the moment. You yeah, know, I mean, it's, um, modern football is, shy. is, We're just is almost the prime. <laughs> what they've it's, done to the uh, game. Well, I, I mean, I, I've said, I've, I've made no bones about it. I've lost all interest in football. I've stopped... Um, I won't go back to Watford for a very long time if I go at all. You know, I, I've gone non-league like a lot of lads have, because it's, pro, it's you know it's almost old school. It's the last stand, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, I don't. Um, I'm so sick and tired of uh, being preached to, which yeah. is what happens every time you walk into a stadium. There's someone preaching you about something. Well, they're preaching about something while they're trying to remove money from your pocket. Yeah. And that's that's all it's about, and it's uh, and I've I've kind of had enough of it. There there came you know there comes a point where you say, when you've got your you know your players breaking the law and not giving a shit, you know, which is what we've had at Watford with one player at least twice. Twice he's been caught, you know, having parties during lockdown and all this sort of crap. Yeah, the, night yeah, before, yeah. the night before a game, you know, the complete lack of respect for the people who are paying his wages, which are the supporters. I'm not going to give that arsehole any more of my money. You know, if he wants to take 50 grand, out, 50 grand a week out of my club, a club I've followed since the 60s, uh, yeah. that's fine, but he ain't taking it out of my pocket anymore. Well, and that's the thing. Obviously, this player doesn't care about Watford as, as much as you yeah. and the other support. But they do. don't, you know, and that's the big difference. You know, yeah. that, that's another big difference now. You haven't got that that link with the club and, and one of the things that's come out of lockdown not just for me for a lot of people is they've they've taken a step back and looked at what's actually going on in football yeah. and, uh, and it's a very uncomfortable thing to do the realization where these people don't actually give a shit about me at all no. so why should i give a shit about them when i you know literally two miles from where i'm sitting now i've got my local football club um who are fantastic you know, fantastic what they do, what they're doing for the community, what they do for the fans who go. And, uh, and you know, I go there, there's probably 20 or 30, 40 Watford lads, ex-Watford lads are all there. So it's like, you know, the good old days. No coppers, no hassle. Yeah. A drink, you know, it's much more fun. Well, I, I've, I've been non-league all my life because I'm um, a big believer, if you like, in that you should support where you come from absolutely yeah. um, i'm born in weymouth weymouth for non-league that's who i support so i've known non-league football and it is the last stand against the prawn sandwich brigade oh um, absolutely yeah absolutely it, they've still got terraces you yeah. Know? yeah you know you can go there like you said you can have a laugh um you know there's guys there that you know they bring down the drum 
Um, we're all singing. It's a fantastic atmosphere, you know. But the, 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 the one thing I like about, you know, I like about football is the banter. Yeah. Know? And you can't have that, uh, you know, we don't get it at Vicarage Road anymore. You see something out of turn and people turn around glaring at you and, you know, stop swearing and all this sort of crap. Exactly. It's like, what? No, for yeah. fuck's sake. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's I mean, I, I think football, as it, as it is, they'd be quite happy to not have people in the ground. You know, yeah. they know the, all the bulk of their money is coming through TV anyway. Um so if we're all sat home watching Sky Sports, they'd be quite happy, you know. They are happy. Uh, not me. I... What what I've um, learned, not learned, but what I've seen over lockdown is watching a game without any supporters in the ground is a completely different experience. I I haven't I haven't watched any. I haven't watched any football. Oh, I have. It's um, like watching paint dry. <laughs> no, I mean the the last game I actually watched. Um, other than a couple of Hemel game, Hemel Town games, is um, uh, at the Watford when Watford beat Liverpool three 0 That was the last game I watched all the way through. Um, I don't even watch the Watford highlights now. I, I've never really watched match of the day because, uh, yeah, more football, less talking really. Yeah, but, um, I, I, it's just um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of footballed out. It's uh, it's a uh, shame. You know, yeah. but that's 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 like you said, that's the way the game has gone. That's what it's progressed to, or not progressed. But it's, it's, it's the architect of its own downfall, I think. You know, yeah. and then you go on Twitter and you've got these teenage tossers sitting in bedrooms, you know, trying to tell me what it was like to be a football fan when you know, before they were born, and it's like, fuck off. I do that. For God's sake. You know, you know it's um, it's uh, I, I don't. Know. Yeah, no um, more. What I wanted to lead on to is Green Street, you said you didn't have your hands were tied at certain points and things you didn't like about it. You were basically told no. So you walked away. Top Dog by Martin Kemp. You yeah. said he was completely different. Yeah, Martin was great. I mean, Top Top Dog is, is you know, is based on my own book. So I knew the story yeah. you know, intimately. And uh, and when I wrote the script, uh, Martin, uh, he knows football. You know, he's a big Arsenal fan. He's always been an Arsenal fan. And uh, and he was wide open, wide open to listening because he, he realised this is your subject. You know, you yeah. know what you're talking about. You know, far more than I'm ever. So I, I would be foolish not to listen to you. And it wasn't just me. That was the stunt guys and that was other guys involved as well. And, uh, and he, he was great. But he knew what he wanted from his script. I mean, one, the first time I met him, um, he'd read, oh, first or second time, um, he'd read the script and liked the script and said, but we need to talk about it. And, and what I'd done foolishly was put everything in the book into the script, tried to condense it, and you, he couldn't do it. So, and he basically tore my script apart um, for about three hours, literally sat with him, and it was just red pen, red pen, red pen. You know, right. can't have this, can't do that. No, you can't do this. And uh, and it was pretty soul destroying stuff. But he 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 says, you know, this is a it's a brilliant script. You just got too much in it. And everything I'm right. doing with you now is designed to make the script better. Um, which he did. You know, it did. And um, and it it becomes much more simple. It becomes more about you know Leo's character, which you know is um, Billy. Yeah, and uh, and it it turned out really well. I think it turned out really well. I'm I'm really pleased with it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a I good little movie. It, it was one of the, to be honest, it was one of the last football films I've seen, um, because everyone always bangs on about the original film of Gary Oldman and Football Factory and, and yeah. all the rest of it. But it was, you know, it 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 was a good film. And I think Martin Kemp always asking you for input is how everyone should be. Well, when we did the big fight scene, you know, I, I'd got low. I mean, everybody, I'd say 99% of the lads in that fight scene were, were, were football lads. So they all knew the score, you know, there were loads from clubs all over London. You know, some come down from up north. Um, and I said to them all, look, if there's anything you see, it, it doesn't matter how small, anything just tell us and we'll deal with it straight away because the fight scene was really one take 
we had one one shot because there was literally you know 150 odd blokes involved in it and they were, and you knew some of them were going to proper start rucking which they they did yeah. and um if that take a lot and when we walked through it first uh martin said well this is what i want to happen and i said you can't it's not like that he wanted everyone to walk forward like this wall you know like something out of zoom. <laughs> and i said it's not like that you'll have one from here one from there they'll, they'll like someone will walk out into the middle and give it the biggie and then walk back yeah, of course, and, yeah. and that's that's how it is it's this kind of um uh disorganized chaos this disorganized yeah. chaotic dance where no one actually wants to get it but they want to look like they are ready to throw a punch exactly until the first punch is thrown and then it's you know it's you, you're fighting you're only interested in your little whoever's standing in front of you or you know within yeah. reach or whatever or who can hit you and um and it was it was working out that disorganized chaos which is what we spent ages doing that on casual life the thing about casual life is it is such a mess but it's all it was all really carefully choreographed that we need you yeah. to do this, to, you know, and we, we gave the lads free reign to do what they want. But as long as they were in that point and we did it, you know, we, we worked on it with Top Dog and it comes across not not considering the numbers involved. I think it came across really well. That scene. It did. It did. And like, like I've, I've, I've already said that the fight scenes in It's a Casual Life, as well as Top Dog, I mean, they were quite realistic and fight scenes are really difficult as far as far as I know so, which is what I know which is very little oh they're, they're, fight they're scenes really, must be really difficult. difficult yeah re really difficult I mean we did because you've you've got to remember that it's, it's often you've got to film them from different angles you know yeah. so, because you you know for, for the central characters and all that stuff so you need everybody to do exactly the same thing more than once. So they've got to do the same thing, which means that everybody around them has got to do the same thing. Whereas if, if you've got a lot of lads, the only way to do it is to get cameras in different angles, filming everything at the same time. But you've got to make sure that those cameras aren't in the way. Yeah, and that's quite difficult. And we were really lucky with Top Dog because we someone had left the platform, you know, one of those oh, okay. things behind, and we managed to get use that that wasn't our idea it was just there yeah. and um they're really difficult but uh, you know b before i wrote everywhere we go me and eddie we were working as extras on films anyway and oh, okay. stuff we did was was fight scenes so we'd learn that side of things because because we'd been on the other side of the camera yeah you exactly. know we're rehearsing fight scenes over and over and over again and then literally you've got one take to get it right it's, yeah and um there was one I, I i did a film called the infiltrator which was a skinhead movie based on a true story uh and we had this there was a, about five or six of us all shaved heads you know went into this cafe and smashed it up beat wow. up all these turks who were inside it was, you know and we'd walked through it and one of the big scenes was i had to pick this girl up and throw her for a, the window the door window and uh and she was a stunt, stunt girl tiny little thing and um so we'd walk through it and i had to pick her up so her head was down so i've got her upside down to throw her yeah. through the door and they said we've it's sugar glass in the door mm -hmm. so but we've only got one so if you get it wrong we're, we're screwed so That's we walk it. through it about four or five times and then when it goes to action i pick her up and threw her at the door and i hadn't changed the glass oh, and it, was, no. it was still hardened glass in the door so she just bounced off it and fell on her head and they were screaming at me like it's my fault and it's like you haven't changed uh, the glass no. so we had yeah. to do the whole thing again with this poor girl in agony with a knackered it's... neck but, um, <laughs> no. but so, you know it teaches you a lesson you've got to uh a to listen yeah you know but you've got to know exactly what what you're doing and trying to convince um lads who often this is the first time even on a film set you know yeah, well, this is it. Yeah. Is, um, is, is difficult, especially when they've been there an awful long time, which was the case with Top Dog. I mean, we were there most of the day. Right. A lot of them got there at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we didn't shoot that scene. I think it was still 6 o'clock at night. And, uh, 
and it's yeah, locked down and it's an awful lot. trying to keep them occupied and amused and all that sort of crap especially as they were doing it for nothing you know you've got to, got to give them something to take from it of course you have yeah but, uh it worked it worked top dog was all right it was yeah. good okay all right thanks dougie that's um that's really it mate oh. um i'd like to um i'd like to thank you for today it's been really interesting um also thank you for doing the interview um on my website but i've decided to to make a youtube channel to you know to sort of bring the interviews off the paper why not you know, so you can hear you know you know you know so people can hear you know you can only put so much down in print but when you're in a in a conversation i mean i never knew you was an extra Oh yeah, yeah it's loads of stuff. things like that come out. You know, very interesting. Oh, it's millions, a lot millions of people out there. there. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people out there that slag off Green Street didn't know that you were also saying that. Oh, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm the first to slag it off. It could have been so much yeah. better. Yeah, uh, and and uh, but it is what it is. You know, I'm, I'm, it's on my CV. That's where it'll always stay. It's not like I'm going to take it off. No, yeah. that's it. Yeah. But, um, okay, mate. Thanks right. very much for today. My, my pleasure. And um, we'll catch up soon. Bye.